Welcome into another episode of Power 5 Picks. We are all the way to week seven. We got a big old slate today, a big old slate next week. Uh, college football is becoming extremely um, fun to watch and entertaining now that we're in the heart and soul of, of conference tournament or conference play. Um, Ethan, welcome. We both uh, were on the same picks last week. I don't know if we're going to be on the same this week, but both of us went four and one bringing my record to 18 and 13 overall or plus 3.7 units. Ethan, 20 and 10 and a push with your overall plus nine units. Let's continue rolling this. Uh, how you feeling with a, uh, you know, pretty solid weekend of football ahead of us? Yeah, I'm feeling great. Um, another great day on the show, like you said, for both of us, although we just have the same picks, but that should just give people more confidence to go bet those um obviously talked about it a few times struggled early on in the year uh college football weeks like one through three four uh i'm on an 11 and 0 run dating back to week five now so uh one of my last two plays uh the late night games in week five uh went nine and oh last week in college football so rolling right now um feeling good ready to keep it going damn yeah, I did not realize you were you were that hot. Um, you've been hot on the show, so I guess that makes sense. But uh, we do post all of our picks, official picks, over on Twitter. Those usually come out a little bit before game time if you do want to follow along for all of our official plays. But let's get into it. Uh, the first game up here, we do have a ranked matchup. Number one, Texas, at technically number 18, Oklahoma. This is a Red River rivalry game. This is in the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Dallas Texas. So it does say Oklahoma is the home team, but it's a neutral site. Honestly, Texas probably has the advantage here. Texas is a 14-point favorite. Over under is 49. Who do you got in a uh, one of the famous rivalries in college football? Yeah, this game's tough. Um, uh, it's really tough. It's not a game I love by any means. For the show, I'm going to lean taking the points with Oklahoma. Um, and it's a very similar situation to what we talked about back in week three um, with some of those other rivalry games um, like Oregon, Oregon state, where uh, we kind of liked Oregon state because, or Washington, Washington state. That's probably a better example where the big brother moves on to a better conference and uh, doesn't really care so much about that little brother anymore. It's similar to that where these teams obviously both moved into the sec. Um, so the conference thing is out of it, but Texas is now the number one team in the country. Um, they have Georgia on deck who, is still a top team um if not the top team in the country so i just think they have better things to look forward to i don't think they're as concerned about the red river rivalry anymore uh at least not this season they're they have their eyes set on the championship they you know if they lose a a rivalry game like so be it so not saying i think they're going to lose this one i just think oklahoma cares a little bit more oklahoma already has the loss to tennessee where they were able to keep that game within 10 points um yeah i just think oklahoma cares a little bit more they need it a little bit more um and as far as the rivalry goes i think they're a little bit more juiced up for it so with the look ahead spot for uh texas i'm gonna take oklahoma to keep it close i think it's gonna be a sweat if you back oklahoma i'm not sure if i will have any money on this game um but that would be my lean for the show well we're not gonna be eye to eye this this week i'm on texas um hate this spot, but there's a few things that I do like. I'm glad you mentioned Texas has uh, Georgia on deck. That's terrifying. Um, but the one thing that I really like about this game for Texas is Texas lost this game last year um, to Oklahoma, 34 to 30. I think they lost like on a last minute drive or something from uh, the Sooners. Um, and, you know, now Texas moving up to number one, the ranking simply because Alabama lost to Vandy. I mean, that happens, but Texas you know, I, I I think there's still questions out there in regards to the the country, how good actually Texas is. I think this is the the staple of Texas there where they just get it done today or this weekend. And I think they honestly roll. I think they win this game pretty big. And I think it's going to be like an eye-opening experience um, for the rest of the country to be like, wow, Texas is, um, you know, a solid team, national championship, a true national championship contender, if they weren't already thinking that. Um, so I, I think Texas has a, a little bit more importance on this than they normally would, especially with Georgia on deck, just because of that bad loss last year. So I think Texas rolls them. I know, like you said, Oklahoma kept it close in that Tennessee game. That was a disgusting game. I, we had, I think I had Oklahoma in that game and they were doing everything in their power to lose by 40 points in that game. So I, I just don't, 
and I've kind of been down on Oklahoma all year. I'm just not super sold on them. I think Texas really takes it to them. Uh, but again, nervous about that uh, look ahead spot for Texas. Again, next week is a phenomenal week of college football. We have phenomenal games. So um, there are going to be a couple look ahead spots as well. But let's move on to the other 330 game. This one last week looked like it was going to be a little bit better. Um, not so at, not mu- as much anymore because USC fell the rankings. But we have number four Penn State at USC. Penn State is a four and a half point favorite over under is sitting at 51. I'll take this one first. Uh, again, this had a lot higher hopes last week before USC lost to Minnesota, but I think we're getting decent value on USC here. So I hate it because Penn State is by far the better team, but I don't think Penn State's truly the number four team in the country. They haven't played anyone at all, traveling all the way across the country against a USC that's pissed off after a bad loss to Minnesota. I think USC keeps this one close. I don't think they're going to win it. I hope they do. I do think there might be a chance. I'll take USC at the plus points there. I am seeing. Penn State is a heavily public team. Just hard for me to take that many points, and it's not that much, but four and a half points for a team that has to travel 3,000 miles against a team that's pissed off after uh, an embarrassing loss. So I'll take USC in this game. Yeah, we're back to uh, agreeing uh, because I am with you on USC here. Um, You said it, though, and this is what might keep me off. Penn State, I think, is just way better. Uh, But the spot here favors USC. Being in USC is a huge advantage. yeah, USC off the loss. I think they're going to, the way I see their motivation coming into this game, they're one and two in the big time. They lost their one test against Michigan. Uh, they beat Wisconsin, who's kind of a nobody this year, and they lose a, a bad one to Minnesota. Both losses on the road. They got another home game, and this was really their last test in the Big Ten for this season. After that, they have Maryland, Rutgers, Washington, Nebraska, UCLA. Um Maybe Nebraska's ranked by that point. I'm not sure, but, you know, this is kind of it for them. Uh, They have the win against LSU. They have the ranked loss to Michigan. They do have Notre Dame to close out the year. Um, But this is – they need this game. Uh, Absolutely need it. Penn State, on the other hand, 5-0, but like you said, hasn't really played anybody. They're kind of just getting into the meat and potatoes of their schedule. Um, But, yeah, ultimately, I just think – Being in USC, the public all over Penn State, I've actually seen some reverse line movement come in. Um, I think USC gets up for this game. If it was at Penn State, I'd probably be all over Penn State. Um, And my one fear is that Penn State, I think, can out-physical USC, which was you and I have talked about that over and over and over again. Um, And Penn State also has a buy on deck, so no look head spot whatsoever. But, yeah, it's a long travel. Um, I think it comes down to a final possession, so I will take the points with USC here. Um, wouldn't shock me if they're, they're the team that wins it all right. Yeah. It's always risky, especially I have my, uh, I have my thoughts on USC. I do think they're a pansy program up against one of the strongest in the big 10, but again, Penn state just kind of had that weak schedule. Um, I'll probably be surprised by the Nittany Lions here. Let's move on to the seven thirty games. Uh, two more ranked games here. We have number nine, Old Miss at number 13, LSU. Old Miss is a three and a half point favorite on the road over under is 62. Who do you got in this SEC matchup? Yeah, I'll start by saying I hope Ole Miss rolls them because I just want Brian Kelly to I, – I don't like Brian Kelly whatsoever. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I just love watching him lose, to be honest. I used to love him. Grand Valley State, my alma mater, uh, kind of got to start him there, but what a jackass. I just can't stand the guy. So uh, I kind of want that, but it's actually one of my favorite plays of the, the day or of the games we're talking about. Uh, I do like LSU to keep it close. Um, I'm not fully sold on Ole Miss. I think they're a good team. Are they a top 10 team? I'm not really sure. Uh, obviously had that bad loss to Kentucky. Eh, it's not a terrible loss, but um, a game they probably should have won. Got to come back and beat the snot out of uh, South Carolina last week. Um, and now they have LSU with Oklahoma on deck. I don't think they're going to be overlooking LSU here. Um but LSU, they lost that first game to USC. They've gone on to win their next four. Uh, one of those wins was also against South Carolina. Um, other other than that, they didn't really beat anybody. Um, but, yeah, I just kind of think the line's fishy. I think public's going to be all over Ole Miss. I think the public perception is Ole Miss is a, a top five team probably um, and the much better team. I think the three and a half is just pretty telling here. Um, so I'm going to trust LSU at home plus the points. Uh, but again, 
Uh, if I don't have money on this game, I will be rooting heavy for Ole Miss just to see Brian Kelly lose. Back on uh, Agreement Island over here. I am also on LSU in this game on the spread. Uh, like you said, LSU, and I know I'm complete agreement with you with Brian Kelly. I can't stand the guy. He, he cries. He's big. He's a bigger whiner than Tom Izzo, um, and I despise <laughs> I him. Know. But they make the same freaking face. Um, anyways. Ole Miss is like this every single year. They, you know, they get into the top five. They're always around in the top ten, and they're just no, they're just no one. They're just a solid team. They, we saw them blunder up against Kentucky. I just, I don't think they're a real team. LSU, they're always in the rankings. They're always, you know, they always have a big win. They always have a, you know, a big loss. Um, not like their their loss earlier in the season was a terrible one, but it wasn't great. I like LSU. I think they're better coached. I think they have the better athletes. I think Ole Miss is a lot of smoke and mirrors, a lot of offense coming out of Ole Miss, but just I just don't think they're put together to be a, a solid team in the long run. Um, just not a super big fan of them. It's the same crap every single year, and I just don't know when people are going to you know catch on that Ole Miss is just a notorious teen-ranked team. They're going to finish fourth in the SEC and win a – uh, maybe a New Year's Six Bowl, but probably not. I don't know. I'm not sold on Ole Miss. I'll take LSU happily plus three and a half at home. I think that is an absolute steal. Um, I think LSU honestly wins outright in this game. Also, like you said, winning four straight after a loss to USC could bring LSU back into talks of you know pushing for a late SEC or late playoff contention here. So uh, I think this is a pivotal moment for LSU. I think the uh, Ole Miss team is a little fragile at the moment um, after that Kentucky loss. So I think LSU is going to take that momentum. I think the pressure is on Ole Miss to bounce back this quick. Um, so I like the spot for for LSU in this game. Moving on to the biggest game of the day, a Big Ten matchup. Oregon's welcome party to the to the Big Ten. They host number two, Ohio State. Oregon is number three now. Uh, Ohio State is a three-point road favorite over under sitting at 54 this is a really tricky game. This is a really tricky game. I don't, not really sold on both teams. Uh, Ohio State had this preseason conception that they were going to be the all and mighty team. And I just haven't really seen it. Uh, they've looked terrible at moments. I know they came back against Iowa, but they that was a miserable first half. They've had multiple miserable first halves this year. I, I think they're not playing to their pretend, potential over here. And then Oregon's kind of been, I don't know what Oregon's doing over there. Kind of the same thing as Ohio State. Everyone's thinking Oregon was going to be a unanimous national championship contender, and I'm just not super sold on Oregon either. Um, so I think this is going to be a, a big game to see where these teams actually stack up in regards to, to the top teams in the country. But I hate to do it, but I think I got to go with Ohio State. They always find ways to win these games. Unless the team is named Michigan the last couple of years, they always win the big game, always, no matter what. I know there's maybe one or two losses in there, but uh, they just seem to always win the big game. And I'll be rooting against them because I can't stand these guys. But I think Ohio State honestly takes it to them. I think they could win by 10-plus points here. Not super sold on Oregon at all. I think Ohio State comes in here with a lot of momentum. They have a buy on deck to um, you know, to, to continue practicing, get better. Oregon has Purdue, which is a much of a look-ahead spot. But um, I think Ohio State rolls. It is a long travel, but – I think it's a welcome party for Oregon. I think Ohio State wins it and then kind of comes back into talks like they were preseason of being, wow, Ohio State might actually be pretty good. How about you? Yeah, this game is as close to a coin flip, I think, as it gets. Um, for the show, I'm going to take Oregon. Uh, and really because they're, they're getting, getting the points, points and they're at home. Uh, I, I just kind of like the situation for Oregon here. I think they got kind of lucky with their schedule. Um, they started off with two home games. They then traveled back-to-back uh, -back weeks. They didn't have a buy in there, but their travel was Oregon State and UCLA. So they stayed out west. They then had the home game against Michigan State. So they've not had to travel across the country yet to go play a Big Ten team. Um, they do have that on deck, but they're playing Purdue. So no look ahead, but you know, Oregon's just gotten to stay – Close to home. Uh, it is a long travel, like you said, for Ohio State. And also, I just think Oregon, coming into this conference, this is the team they wanted to compete with. This is the team they had circled heading into this season. So I think the crowd's going to be really into it. I think uh, it gives them a little bit of a, a nice home field edge. Um, I can see it coming down to a tie game, Ohio State kicking a field goal for the win. And I'm going to have the plus three in my pocket, thinking it's either a push if he makes it um, or – 
well, I guess overtime at that point. But uh, I, I'd rather just have the points in this one. So, so I, again, again, I don't know if it's a bet I'm actually going to make. Um, and as always, follow us on Twitter because we will tweet out uh, the bets that we do make. But for the show, I do lean Oregon uh, mostly because they're the dog. Yeah, I'm also looking into this total as well. I actually try to stay away from college totals recently. Uh, they used to be my really big bets, and now I just I, I haven't been seeing them well. But I'd be interested in that total. Um, I know a lot of people are probably going to take the under because two very good defenses and offenses have not been clicking. But I could see this being some type of a, a back and forth where game where you know they both get into the 30. So I, I'm going to look a little bit at that total. But um, yeah, follow us on Twitter. Um, I might have a play there. Um, probably should stay away, but I might have a play. That brings us to our nightcap, a Big 12 showdown, number 11, Iowa State at West Virginia. West Virginia is a three-point home dog. Over under is at 53 and a half. Who do you got in this one? Yeah, I'm gonna take uh I'm gonna take West Virginia at home plus the points here. Uh it's the unranked team um against, against the, the ranked team. team. Now they're not favored, but it is just a field goal spread here. Um, so I think that's a little bit telling. We always talk about West Virginia, how it's one of the tougher places to play um, for these schools. And, yeah, I, I honestly just prefer the spot here uh, for West Virginia. And I think the line's fishy. They're off that big win against Oklahoma State. Um, so I do fear there could be a bit of a flat spot. Uh, but they're they're just so used to playing good games in the Big 12. I mean, they're – constantly the unranked team who has to fight against all these you know in previous years oklahoma oklahoma state k-state kansas has been ranked um just game after game so you know i think they're they're used to being in this spot so i don't know that they're gonna have um much of a hangover effect and then iowa state i'm just not fully bought into uh they have the win against iowa i mean cool you won by a point against a team that still struggles offensively uh, other than that, I mean, they beat Houston, Baylor, two teams that I'm not very high on whatsoever. Um, so yeah, I just I'm not super high on Iowa State. Uh, I'm kind of shocked they're this high up in the rankings. I think West Virginia has a chance to beat them outright and push them uh, close to out of the rankings this week. Yeah, tough place to play. Line's a little bit fishy, um, so I'm going to take the points with West Virginia. Yeah, I love West Virginia here, so I'm taking them. Plus the points as well. I honestly think they went out right. And I honestly think they went out right. And it's not even close. Um, like you said, completely. I don't not bought in on Iowa state at all. I mean, they're number 11. That is an absolute joke. I don't think this team's going to be in the rankings come uh, week 10 or week 11. It's way too high. They're dropping because teams are, or they're, you know, getting a better rank because teams are losing ahead of them. They haven't played anyone. So uh, Morgantown, very tough place to play. I've been there before, actually, at the uh, Iowa State game when Iowa State was a legit better team with Brock Purdy and um, Brees Hall and uh, my buddy over there. They were an actual um, championship team, and West Virginia beat them there. So, uh, obviously, you can't look too much into years past, but it's a very tough place to play. It's a night game, too. The guys are going to be buzzing there. Um, beers are going to be flowing in the in the Appalachian Mountains. So, I like West Virginia big. I think they win. Um, think they win big, but for the show, I'll take uh, take the spread here. I do do. I did just write down all your plays. I don't know if you noticed, but a couple of weeks ago, you were on all favorites. This week, you were all underdogs. Oh boy, <laughs> you're on the dogs. But the last time you were on all freight favorites, I think you went four and one. So maybe yeah. you can, maybe all the same is is a good thing. That makes me nervous. <laughs> I like I am a dog better by heart. So I I like it quite a bit. Um, again, thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you do like, subscribe, share. We really appreciate it. We do have our NFL show out. Um, we post that every single week. Um, we also will be adding uh, NHL. Um, just maybe a, a small weekly episode there um, because NHL is back. If you guys are unaware, um, just another twist into your betting um, your betting portfolio as we move forward here, but. Um, Ethan, do you have anything to add here? Again, huge week next week, huge week. You do not want to miss power five picks next week. We're glad we got back in the green last week as well. Um, the week prior was our first week in the red, but we're back in the green. Ethan, anything you have to add before we sign off here? Yeah. I mean, all I could really say is we're just absolutely rolling in the show right now, seeing college football really well. So, um, yeah, please, if you like the show, just give us a, a like, uh, a sub, if you haven't subbed already and, 
Um, you know, if your friends like betting college football as well, just let them know about let them know about our show because uh, right now is a great time to watch and uh, follow the plays we're giving out. We're red hot, so um, yeah, we appreciate it. Keeps us doing this, and uh, let's have another winning week. Absolutely. Go dogs for Ethan's sake. Go dogs just to make the sake of college football another crazy week. That'd be awesome. Um, but we appreciate you guys. Good luck and all your bets. Hope you guys can win some money and we will see you guys. We'll be live for most likely on Saturday, Sunday, Monday, if not all three, um, at least two of those. So um, we'll see you guys on the lives and um, happy weekend. You better start listening to the Better in Green podcast. You will not regret it. Trust me, trust me, trust me. And hey, I'm Dean Blandino. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Better Win Green, eh? To Better Win Green, eh? To Better Win Green, eh? Listen in and cash out. That's what it's all about. Come on, let's make cash now. We always on spot and we cover old spot from the bottom to the top, eh? Shout out to Ethan, shout out to Wyatt, shout out to Ben. Welcome, welcome to our podcast. Better Win Green.